What's up? Well, well, I'll find right here. Uh, obviously, this is a fight week that you've been calling for for the better part of the last two years. So, you know, now that fight camp's over and you're only a handful of days away from challenging for the undisputed welterweight title, like, what's the emotions now that you finally got this fight you've been calling for? Man, it feels great. Like, I've been starving for this day. I've been waiting for this day forever. And just in general, I just love to fight. I've been in the practice room. I've been training for a full year, waiting, waiting, waiting. And once we finally got the date, it was locked in. Then camp went by so fast. It was uh, one of the hardest camps we've had. And now it's fight week. We made it here. It's healthy. We're in Manchester. And, man, Saturday night is going to be uh, epic. Have you been training for Leon specifically for a while? Because I feel like there's been a couple champions since you've been on this run. And even he's fought Colby. He's fought Kamaru twice. But did you know it would probably be Leon again at some point for the title? 100%. I've been training for Leon since three years ago, since that fight. I've been wanting that fight back forever. So I've been watching him, paying attention to him, studying him. And like you said, I was just waiting as a backup for him and Kobe. And we weren't really training for Kobe. It was all just a camp for Leon. So it's basically one guy we trained for for the last year and a half, two years. And uh, yeah, we got dialed in. And obviously since then, you've You've been saying, like, you know, I'm going to walk through him. I could 50-42 this guy and all that. So I'm just curious, why don't you see envision, like, a stoppage win? Because when we hear you talk, it's always I'm going to kind of drag him through the fire for five rounds. Because I want to torture him. I want him to realize how much better I am than him. When you go out there, you get a finish. People go, oh, you got lucky. You did this. Oh, that happened because of that. Uh, but if I go out there and dominate him and beat him in all aspects of MMA, wrestling, grappling, striking, uh, you know, jujitsu get him to the point of making him want to quit. That's what I want. I want to torture him. I want him to the point of looking at his coaches and his coaches had nothing to say and they walk away because they're embarrassed. That's what I wanted to feel like on Saturday night. Do you think you're getting under his skin at all? I don't care about getting under his skin. I care about getting through his skin. And obviously, uh, we heard your coach uh, compare you. He was talking about your boxing. He said, you know, hands like Canelo and this and that. So has that, is this something you've been focused on specifically for this camp or have you always kind of been training your hands and this is just where you are, you are now? Yeah, I think every fight we're trying to bring something new, right? Every every fight you see me evolving. So for this last year, all we've been doing is getting better and better and better in all aspects of MMA. I have the best striking coach in the world. And all we do is try to get better as ourselves. We don't really care what Leon's going to bring to the table because we know that our best version is the best fighter in the world. Our best version could be anybody in the world. So we sharpen our striking skills. We sharpen our boxing skills. People are going to hate it. They're going to say whatever they want to say, but... You guys will see it Saturday night when I show out there. And, yep. you said, and you also said with a win that you think you could become the second greatest welterweight ever just behind GSP. Uh, what else would you have to do to, in your mind to kind of take that mantle as the best ever? I think just continue on winning, right? We, when you look at my resume, people don't – when you look back at it, Damian Maya fought for the title twice. Wonderboy fought for the title twice. Luke waited as a backup, and he should have fought for the title. Gilbert fought for the title. All these guys that were at the top during this era – and I, it's not like I beat them all on five fight losing streaks. They're all winning at the times when I was beating them. And I made it look easy, and I walked through them. So if I go out here and beat Leon, who beat Usman twice, who everybody thought was up there with uh, GSP, I think maybe a couple more of the young up-and-comers, right? Because even beating Leon, they're going to say, this guy's going to be me next. Oh, this guy's going to be me next. They're still going to doubt me. So if I just keep going out there, beating the next guy that's in line, beating the best guys, my resume, I want it just to be you know, unmatchable. And just two final quick ones. Uh, have you have you had a chance to run into Curtis? You know, you guys are both like Chicago guys coming over to England, fighting for you know the, the, your dreams. So, is it kind of special to have him there with you, knowing from you came from the same place, you're both chasing the same thing on the same card? Yeah, it's epic, right? I saw him uh, yesterday. We, we always chop it up. He's cool, man. Uh, both of us being from Chicago, like my coach put it out there. Uh, Lou put it out there the other day. He's like, Chicago, we need to stand up. We got two Chicago boys going to England, fighting for a championship. It doesn't happen, right? And, you know, Chicago's sports suck right now. So, so we're the only chance of bringing gold back to the city. And then last one for me, I don't know if you saw, but on November 1st, they're going to roll out some of these new rule changes that allow 12 to 6 elbows, and um, they've redefined what a ground, grounded opponent is. I'm curious, did you hear this news, and what do you make of these rule changes that people seem to think should have been made a long time ago? Yeah, I mean, I think the 12 to 6 elbow should have been a while ago, so... I don't think it really make a difference. I think people, regardless, they throw in. It's just 
whatever the ref sees, right? If he sees that angle or he doesn't see that angle. I don't the only f- person that I've ever seen throw a twelve to six elbow where it got DQ'd was John Jones. Yeah. Bilal, you've made it clear that just over here, Bilal. Yeah. Uh, you've made it clear that you hate Leon Edwards. You've said that numerous times throughout this build up. Can you explain why you're using that word? It's a strong word. Why is it so personal for you with Leon? It's very personal because when you look at you know, his path to the title and the way he did it, it's very similar to mine, right? He had to go the long road. Nobody was respecting him. Nobody gave him a shot. And then I took a fight on short notice against him. And he committed the foul. He injured me. And the fight got stopped because of that. So, you know, there was a lot of, on my end, it was like my first main event. This is supposed to be my spot, my time to shine, this, this, and this. And it was like, take it from me by him. And he wouldn't give me another shot. And then he tried to just play it off like, oh, I would have won anyway. I would have did this anyway. And then when you put that narrative out there, fans are just like, oh, well, he's probably right. So from there on out, I just had it in the back of my mind. I had that bad taste in the back of my head this whole time that, man, I want to feel what would have happened. I want to see what would have happened. And then I'm dominating all these guys, winning all these guys, and then they're still disrespecting my streak. Him, his coach, his team, they're still saying, oh, he's not next. We need somebody else. We need somebody else. We need somebody else. So the disrespect that he had, he felt it. He started giving it to me. So that's what that's what pissed me off. That's what's pushing me to to hate the guy. That's what's making me excited to make him bleed, to make him break. You mentioned how your team has compared your boxing and your striking to Canelo. Do you feel like Leon and the UK fans are really underestimating your stand up and are going to be surprised on Saturday night? Man, I really hope he is underestimating it. I've been underestimated my last five fights, and not one of those fights has been a close fight. Not one of those fights has been a, uh, a hard fight. They've all been easy. And I said that Leon's going to be my easiest fight. So what does that tell you? The fans, the people, the, they could say whatever they want to say. They could doubt me. But my team, my family, they know how hard I work. They know what we do in the gym. They know what we're doing uh, behind closed doors. And those are the only opinions that really matter to me. How is it having Khabib supporting you as well? Because... You mentioned that he's helped with the game plan for this one. I mean, it's always amazing, right? For a guy that I consider the Michael Jordan of the sport, the go to the sport to like message me and ask me how I'm doing fight week. And I'm just like, bro, why you're messaging me? It's it's surreal still. But it's always cool. It's it's uh it's not like it's not like uh humbling, but it's just like amazing to see where we are now. Like my coach always tells me, enjoy the journey. Think of where we started, where we were. And when I always go back to like the Facebook memories, when you get those in your Facebook and it's like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, where you were, you you were wishing for even being close to where you are now. So it's just being grateful for the journey and grateful for all the people in my life that actually want to see me win, like genuinely out of their, their heart. They want to just see me su- succeed and they don't want nothing from it. Final one for me. Is that a tricky situation though? Because Islam has made it very clear he wants to move up and he's supported by Khabib. That would be two guys supported by Khabib. Be a tough spot for him in the middle, wouldn't it, if that was to happen? <laughs> I mean, I would never fight Islam. He's my brother. So I think for myself, like I said, maybe there's two or three guys that are next in line uh, after this fight that I think I win and then I have a chance to move up to middleweight. So I'm, always, I'm never really looking that far ahead. But I think that he still got some fighters to fight. I still got some fighters to fight. And then it'll some, we both can move up. Bilal, down here to your left. Um, you mentioned, obviously, your deep-rooted hatred of Leon. We've seen fighters go into fights before with such hatred towards somebody, and it's affected their game plan. How are you going to make sure that doesn't happen to you? I think it helps me because the you know the last five or six fighters I've had, a lot of them were, were nice guys, like Wonder Boy, uh, Maya, even Gilbert Burns, Luke, they're both, they're all nice. And you're trying to figure out ways to, you know, fuel yourself. The Sean Brady fight, I fueled myself because he was talking trash. I was doubted so much in that fight. They said he was going to walk through me. And then that fuel made me go out there with a chip on my shoulder. That's the same fuel that's bringing this fight, but it's even more now. And you obviously arrived in enemy territory a couple of days ago. What's the reception being like in Manchester so far? Honestly, it feels like home. I, I literally had more fans show up to the, my, the airport uh, when I arrived than Leon had when he arrived with the belt. Like the people here have been great. I, it feels like I have family here now. They're taking care of me, my team, uh, giving them all food and everything. It's like I haven't had no issues at all. And a lot of fighters who have come here and 
tasted the enemy territory, the booze or whatever, they get fueled by it. Are you expecting the same to be the same to be for you? Uh, I mean, I'm hoping it's going to be 5 a.m. So a lot of them will be tired and sleepy. So they're not going to have the energy to boo. But if they do, it doesn't really matter because, like, I have an ear for the people that I love. So I'm going to hear my family cheering. My dad is making the trip down. So that's going to be amazing. And, uh, yeah, those are the only ones that really matter to me. And final one for me. You've got a lot of ice on there. What's at the bottom of the chain? Uh, this is a Handela. This is a, a character for his back is turned and his back will turn. You'll see his face. Uh, once Palestine is free. So I'm working with a company and uh, a jeweler in Chicago. It's called VVS King. He uh, made this for me and he must uh, uh, auction it off and raffle it off after the, the fight and then uh, give all proceeds to Gaza. And we, we, you and I briefly talked about this a, a couple of weeks ago, but have you thought of that moment of being able to raise the flag with the UFC belt? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be surreal. And like I said, I always keep saying I just want to give the people there something to cheer for. Give them something, give them some victory. Give them something to to look at and say, that's my flag. We got a real champion. Thank you. Uh, Bilal, over here, right behind. Hi. Oh. Hi. What's up? Uh, okay. Considering how long it took you to get the title shot, do you almost feel a bit of uh, pressure like this could be your only opportunity? I mean, this is my, my Super Bowl regardless. When you look at the NFL, you look at the NBA, like teams will make it to the Super Bowl and never make it again. I'm not looking at it as I need a second chance or I need a, a best of seven series. This is my moment. This is what we've been working for the the last five years. Um, so your next fight is always your most important fight, but this is really the biggest fight that you're ever going to have. And I'm going all in with this fight. So there's not going to be any holding back. There's not going to be any, uh, all right, well, let's, let's save a little on the gas tank. Our gas is going to be empty after this. And previously when I'd spoken to you, you were kind of bothered by Leon's lack of fight promotion. Now he's done some media. Do you feel like he's promoting the fight a little bit better or do you still feel that way? I mean, he doesn't really, he's not really doing media. He's whispering, right? He, he just looks stupid. I'd rather have his coach talk because the coach was talking trash yesterday. So uh, it'll be a funner buildup uh, talking with that little gremlin. Uh, yeah, speaking of that, that's the run in the elevator, right? What could you tell us about that? Uh no, I just I just heard like a little short freaking midget screaming something, and I was like, "What the heck was that?" And I, I saw it ended up being his uh, coach in front. But Leon and his team they didn't say nothing. His brother was trying to give me a dirty look, uh, but he didn't know I was sizing him up uh, for after the cage. If he ends up hopping in the cage, wanted to do something. So you didn't talk to Leon at all in that interaction? Uh, no, no. It was mostly just his coach. All right, and uh, one more for me. Uh, we Obviously, representing Palestine has been uh, massive for you throughout this camp. We saw that clip on Countdown, that incredibly emotional clip. Uh, how did you connect uh, with the kid initially, uh, Jude, and how did you end up bringing him over to America? What was the backstory? Uh, it's been amazing, right? Uh, we work with PCRF, Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. They do a great job of uh, creating cancer centers out there, but now it's a lot harder there to do that now. So now they're... Uh, goal is to bring families over there that are in need of medical need and bringing them to America. So they were able to bring Jude and his father. They lost their mother in the bombing uh, as she was protecting him. And they brought two other brothers uh, down. And now they're bringing other multiple families down for, for medical need. So like when Jude first came, he literally had like screws coming out of his kneecap uh, because like his kneecap got dislocated. So they don't have no anesthesia there right now. They don't have really... They don't have any medical supplies over there, so they're doing everything on the floor, on the ground. So we had to bring him to America, uh, and once he got here, we were able to give him uh, you know, medical help at the Ronald McDonald Center in Chicago. He was able to start doing rehab over there, and uh, you know, he's on the right track now. Now he's on the right track of what a kid's life should be. Kids, he's <laughs> to buy him toys and see him playing, playing and uh, it makes you emotional. Thank you. Well, um, given how long uh, Leon made you wait for this rematch when you get the win, if you get the win, is it going to be sweet to, you know, kind of deny him when he comes for that rematch? I mean, he hasn't earned a rematch. Who would you beat? You beat Kobe, who sucks, and then you beat Usman in the rematch. So there's really nothing that I think entails him for a rematch. And what I'm going to do to him, they're going to be like, bro, there's no point in doing a rematch. I'm going to walk through him, and they're going to be like, Back to the bottom of the ladder. Leon, this guy was the champion? No way. This guy sucks. 
Uh, one of the things I feel like has rubbed you the wrong way is the way you spoke about UFC 300 and saying the UFC didn't want you in that in that slot. From from your perspective, was that ever talked about as a possibility of you and Leon headlining that show? I mean, he's he's talking like he's a superstar. The the guy literally goes in hiding after every one of his fights. People don't know who he is. I was walking down Manchester, like, who are you fighting? I said, Leon Edwards. He's like, who's that? I was like, that's your guy's champion. No, we don't know that guy. Like, people don't know who he is. He doesn't promote himself. He doesn't talk. So for the UFC, they were probably like, nah, we'll wait till after Ramadan. So Bilal has a full camp, a best camp, and uh, we'll keep it that way. Bilal, over here. Um, when you watch the first fight back with Leon and you look at now, how do you feel you have evolved as a fighter and how Leon has evolved as a fighter? I mean, I've changed. Uh, I'm a whole different person. Like, literally, that fight was three weeks' notice. It was after a Diego Lima fight. And, you know, a lot goes into short-notice fights. So, for me, that fight, I don't really care about watching that fight back because I'm not nothing like that person. I'm not nothing like I was the last year. I'm not nothing like I was last week. Every day I'm getting better. Every day I'm growing. Every day we're working. Uh, so the version I am now would kill any version that I, I was back then. Leon, it's basically the same. I think we've seen him the last two or three fights do the same exact stuff, and he's fought like the same style of fighter, right? Usman and Kobe are kind of the same. The Kobe fight was basically a freebie because neither one of them did anything. And then the Usman third fight was kind of Usman wasn't the same fighter. So I think uh, Leon got a lot of credit for that fight, but I think Usman just rushed back after that head kick, and uh, he didn't have the same confidence and swagger that he usually does. And you mentioned Leon's fighters, uh, previous fight to be in similar base fighters. You are also a wrestling base fighter. Where do you feel your style is different from the likes of Kamara Usman and Colby Covington? I think I just have a higher IQ than both of them. I push a, a different pace than both of them. People, I've been saying forever that Colby has cardio kickboxing, and he showed it his last one. It was just like UFC gym kickboxing. Usman doesn't keep a, a high pace. He, he has great pressure, great strength, but I do it all. I have strength, pressure, power, uh, you know, grappling, and I put it all together better than anybody in the UFC. Last one for me. You mentioned being the underdog in your last five fights. Why do you feel that fighters, bookies, and fans underestimate you? I just think that... Uh, they want to see me lose because I'm going against their favorite fighters, right? The fan favorites in Wonderboy, Luke A, Gilbert. And then they look at me and they see that, you know, I'm just from a small gym in Chicago. I didn't start martial arts when I was five years old. I don't have a black belt in anything. I didn't wrestle in college. Uh, so they just assume that I'm supposed to suck. But nobody works harder than me. And people will say that and do this, but... If you come work out with me, none of these guys will push like I push. None of these guys see the game like I see the game and break the game down as I break the game down and uh, have the IQ that I have. Best of luck, Bill. Bill Thanks, I'll just down to you right here. Uh, there's someone who's been very critical of the fight in Conor McGregor. Um, in the future, is that a fight that you'd relish to take? And is it a big money fight for you as well? I mean, anytime you bring him up, it's a money fight, right? But uh, I don't know. I if he's pulling out for a freaking toe to fight Michael Chandler, he'll probably pull out for uh, like a broken nail to fight me. Thank you. Hey, Bilal Black here. This is Priest with a victory on Saturday over Leon Edwards. What is the first thing you plan to do with the belt? The first thing I plan to do with the belt is give it to my coach, Lewis Taylor. He's been with me since high school, and uh, we started this together. Well, earlier this week, <clears throat> in one interview, you did you question Leon's desire, and especially in the um, in the second fight with Usman, you said you know ahead of the fifth round that he needed the motivation from his coach. Is that something that you genuinely believe that he maybe lacks desire? Yeah, one hundred percent. Like you look at a lot of teams, a lot of coaches, and his coach is more like a cheerleader. I maybe it's because his coach is uh, his coach sucks, and he has no really advice, so he's just giving him more like hype words come on, Liam, you got to do this. And if you're a champion and you need somebody to hype you up and need somebody to, like, push you, you're not really a champion. Like, you don't belong there. I'm a guy that my coach needs to tell me to slow down. My guy, my coach needs to tell me to take a day off. Leon's probably one of those guys where his coach needs to stand behind him in the car beeping, like, come on, Leon, push a little harder. Let's jog a little longer. And uh, they go freaking paint their nails afterward. Thank you.